Hello. Welcome to the final semi-final round. Semi-final match, rather, of the tournament. This is Calco versus MT. Both very good runners. They both had world record before multiple times, I think. So should be a very exciting race. Looks like our runners should be ready any second now. The countdown's already going. There we go. And we are off. Calco getting a little bit of a head start. I think they're going to get resynced here. Not going to go over all the basics, but yeah, if anybody has any questions about stuff that I'm not covering or how anything works in the game, feel free to ask. I may or may not know the answer. I like to think I know a little bit about this game, though. Just going through the intro for now. Assuming... Oh, actually, MT is switching to Hasty on the intro screen. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm pretty clueless, to be honest. Technically, like, theoretically, switching to Hasty on the intro screen is a little bit faster than doing it in 1.3, but for humans, it tends to be slower just because... There's way more inputs, and if you even lose like a couple frames on each one, it'll end up being a bit slower. Yeah, pretty much the only place people have heard my voice is from the tutorial videos, but I'm not sure how many people have watched them. I was not paying attention to which strats they were doing in 1-1. One -one. I'm assuming nobody went for the perfect jump. 1-2 is where the first big differences might happen. Because we have a frame-perfect trick here that you have to just keep attempting until you get it, basically. So it can take a lot of tries. Kalka got a second try, I think? And I lost count of how many that was for MT. Maybe two or three? MT ran out of eggs, so he had to grab some red coins there just loses a half second on the score screen. Not a big deal. So it looks like Calco's a few seconds ahead right now, but he is going to have to switch to Hasty in 1-3, so it'll probably even out at least a little bit. One three is a nice fun movement level. Lots of slopes to avoid and some not just run right platforming. Oh no, empty hit in the wrong message box. Just a little time lost. Both getting through the level pretty smoothly so far. MT jumping off the slope to get a faster oscillation, which can save a couple of seconds. Er, not a couple of seconds, a couple of frames. I wish it was a couple seconds. One frame saved. That will decide the run right there. Falco's bringing three eggs into 1-4. I believe he does the top route, where he breaks the blocks and goes up top. That skips having to bounce on the bouncy balls, which slows you down a little bit, but you do have to also do left-rights to get through those little holes without scraping, so I'm not really sure if it saves much time or not. 
I don't think it saves much if it does. Maybe a few frames. We're going to be doing an off-screen pot shot to break open the pot with the key in it without having to push it. Calco getting that nice tongue to pick up the key just a tiny bit faster. That key tongue actually doesn't save as much as you'd think. I think it's about 0.2 seconds or so. But it looks super cool. We are on to the most boring boss in the game. Basically just throw a few eggs at him. I forget if it's five or six. Just keep throwing at him till he dies. You basically just want your eggs to be inside him when his hitbox appears. And there really isn't much else to the fight. Although, if you hit him at the wrong place, he'll end up moving towards you, and sometimes he'll end up crowding you in the corner, and then you get take damage, and then it's super laggy. This is the most interesting boss story-wise, because you get to knock off his pants, though. Yeah, Bigger Boo is pretty close for being boring, but at least you have to bounce eggs off the wall, you know? And there's bats to avoid. We are on to the most boring level in the game, perhaps. This is 1-5. Hopefully we'll be seeing some swag from our runners here. Really not much to talk about, just trying to avoid red coins and flowers. And not take damage. So each- so the first red coin and the first flower you get will cost you a half second on the score screen. After that, each one only costs a frame, so... Usually runners will either try to avoid all the red coins, or not really worry about it at all. But since this is an auto-scroller, there's no reason to collect coins. If you want to go get a snack, this is a good time. Calco showing off some mashing in the corner. MT juggling some eggs. Gotta get some entertainment. Fiona's gonna quick eat dinner while this auto scroller is ending. Better be a pretty quick dinner. Because we're almost done. So there is an optimization you can do at the end of this. I'm curious if anyone's gonna do it. If you enter the goal ring by like running full speed rather than just hugging the right side of the screen, you can save a few frames. It was just recently discovered. Looks like Calco's not doing it. Well, maybe MT will. Yeah, it looks like he's lining up for it. Nice. I'm not sure if that saved time or not, but... Looked like he at least tried it. Lost time. Okay. Okay, that's swag points for the attempt, anyway. I attempted it in my last race, and I totally forgot the queue and probably lost like a half second. How many swag points? Uh, and we're gonna have to ask Colthor about that one.
I believe he is the authority on swag points. Not too much to say about 1-6, except there's a few different strats for this ending here. Curious what our runners will do. Kalko is shooting the stilt guy and then doing a couple perfect flutters. Didn't quite make it up. I find that one really difficult to do for some reason. MT's just doing the more standard strat. Fitting the lantern guy. It's a little bit slower than the double perfect flutter, but a lot easier. We are on to everyone's favorite level, 1-7, called Touch Fuzzy Get Dizzy. And soon you may find out why. Gonna escort a little melon bug through this level to knock out some enemies easily. Hopefully clear out some fuzzies too. Oh yeah, look at Kalko getting fuzzied. Fortunately, he didn't get stopped by any of the slopes. Sometimes if you hit a an upward slope at the wrong time, you'll lose all your speed. But Kalko avoided them all, so it shouldn't have lost him too much time. Bringing in lots of eggs to 1-8 because there's not many opportunities to get eggs in this level. And you want to have plenty for Salvo, the boss at the end. If you have lots of eggs, you can knock them out real quick. Going to be doing an off-screen egg shot here for a switch. Have to do some camera manip to get the screen high enough. Falco nails it. A little bit laggy though. MT nailing it as well. So a perfect salvo fight would be done in one cycle before salvo goes into his invulnerable state, but that's very difficult to do. So normally we'll see two cycles. Should be able to knock him out in four or five egg shots. Nice. Pretty clean fight from Calco. Did get hit, but killed Salvo very quickly, so... MT is pretty good as well. Probably lost a little bit of time because Salvo did one extra jump. Twelve fifty seven World One fade out for Calco. Anything sub thirteen is pretty good. MT's at 1308, I think. Still a very close race. Lots of opportunities for MT to make up that time later on. On the 2 1, we're going to be doing a pipe glitch. Most pipe glitches in the game just save the time of the animation of going down the pipe, but this one actually takes you to a different destination than the pipe normally does. And it just saves the time of jumping over that mid ring and bouncing on the bouncy ball. It's like maybe a second or maybe even less, I'm not sure. Doesn't save a ton of time. 
Oh, MT opting not to do it and just jumping over the mid-ring. Really not a bad idea because if you accidentally go down that pipe, you lose a ton of time. The one in 2-8 saves a lot more, so I imagine MT will be going for that one. That one's probably about 4 seconds, if I remember right. I believe they both collected all the coins. Which is obviously mandatory. We're gonna be bouncing on a couple of shy guys here. Or just one shy guy, I guess. I don't even remember how this level works. Get over all these falling rocks. So 2-2 two, two is, I would say, the most difficult level so far, and one of the harder levels in the game. There's a few difficult tricks here. We're going to be intentionally taking damage to get a toady that we're going to use to skip a Baby Mario section later on. And Calco's going for a double perfect flutter here. He nails it. Skip the beanstalk a little bit faster. You can also bounce on the green shy guy that comes out of the pipe. I think it only loses about a second, and it's quite a bit easier. You don't need to gain as much height from your perfect flutters. And then this toady jump is just to skip a big section where you grab baby Mario. It's actually not too difficult. It's one of the easier parts of the level. Halco is doing the hard strat for the section. Doing a perfect flutter while spitting a shy guy, which is kind of hard to time. MT doing a somewhat older strat. Still saves a little time over going on the bouncy ball. Where you just have to do the perfect flutter but not the shy guy spit. A lot easier to perfect flutter when you're not focusing on also spitting an enemy at the same time. This last room is just a bunch of movement, trying to avoid slopes, tonguing these walls to turn around faster, because they kill your momentum immediately. And avoiding these piranhas. You do not want to get eaten. Lots of these gusties in 2-3, they have very bad hitboxes, only uh, the hitboxes is a fraction of what they look like on the screen, so it's very easy to think that you're going to land on them and end up taking damage or not land on them at all. Calco getting through it pretty cleanly though. Got some kind of precise egg shots to get through this foam. Pretty clean. Helco grabbing the Baby Mario star facing left, which is a little bit slower, but it's hard to optimize the facing right strat. If you face right when you grab a Baby Mario star, you'll get a boost to the left. Which, that's what MT did there, but he ended up just getting... The boost pushed him straight into the wall, so he lost all his speed from it. So that didn't actually end up saving time. But if you do grab the star perfectly, you have to grab it kind of low. For, to get the boost and not hit the wall. It does save a little bit of time. Mm. 
Calco is on to 2-4. We're going to be seeing a couple tricks in this level. There's a gate hat coming up where you throw an upshot and it kind of clips into the gate and opens it from the opposite side. And then we're going to be doing a perfect flutter, which is just letting go of jump and repressing at the top of your, at, around the peak of your jump. And you can get a little extra height to get up that ledge. You're not supposed to be able to get up that ledge. There's like a complete other way of getting through the section that you're intended to do. But Shiggy didn't think that you could gain a couple extra pixels of height if you flutter just right. Silly Shiggy. We are on to another boring boss fight. This is basically like Bert, except there's not as many invincibility frames, so it goes a little faster, and you have to bounce your eggs off the wall. Calco getting a kind of laggy fight. He ended up creating a star because he bounced his egg off the one of his eggs hit the floor. If you bounce an egg off of two walls, it'll create two stars when it hits an enemy. And if you don't collect those stars, it creates a lot of lag here. This is Volpe's beloved level, as he just said in chat. There are two shell jumps in this level. Hoping Calco will go for both of them. Yep. That first one only saves about a third of a second. But it's, you know, mandatory for the swag. Second one saves quite a bit more, because you don't have to push the rock. I'm not sure how much it saves. Definitely worth doing. Fairly easy as well. The hardest part of this level might be the foam shot in the second room that MT's about to do. There's a couple, I think multiple star clouds in there that you're trying to avoid because they'll block your egg. And then if you shoot too high, the daisy on top will end up falling on you. So it's a lot more difficult than it looks. Curious if either of our runners will do the ground pound cancel. Calco did not. That might be a poor only strat. If you let go of down at just the right time when you're ground pounding through the foam in the first room, you can like cancel the ground pound without actually pounding all the way to the floor. Yeah, MT didn't do it either. But if you pr if you let go just a little bit too early, then you'll have like one little piece of foam left and you'll have to do a second ground pound to get through. So it's pretty risky. And doesn't save as much time as you'd think. Calco bringing four eggs into 2-7. I think that is for an optimization that Poor came up with recently. That just avoids one little left right through the foam. Or maybe two left rights. We'll see if he goes for it here. It's also going to be grabbing a big egg and shooting it to turn all the enemies on the screen and green into stars. There, he did the egg shot. Nice. That was very clean. And those stars don't despawn when they go off screen, so you end up getting too many sprites and the game can't load in anymore, which makes some bullet bill cannons not load in. And if those cannons were there, you'd have to end up ground pounding a post to get around. It, yeah, it saves a few seconds. Or at least a couple. I'm not sure.
MT is going to be going for a strat here to get... Oh, we just missed it. To go under that rock. You have to do some kind of precise camera manipulation to get under there. Sadly, Calco just skipped the Swagmobile. So that'll be a loss of some potential swag points. That Swagmobile is very slow, though. I forget how much time it loses, but it is a lot. I feel like it might be more than 10 seconds. MT skipping it as well. On to 2-8, the Potted Ghost's Castle. One of the strangest bosses. Never imagined fighting a flower pot in a video game, but I guess weirder things can happen. Gonna be doing another pipe glitch wrong warp right there. And that one acts basically as if you went through the horizontal pipe just above. It saves a few seconds of riding the cookie to get up there. So we brought a ton of eggs into this level to shoot at this pot here on Calco's screen. I believe each one of these egg shots saves about a second, so it's definitely worth doing. Empty going for that pipe glitch as well. And nailing it first try. One of the hardest parts of this level is coming up. The, um... What we like to call the cookie. The little circular arrow platform. You want to land on it when it's facing up and just a little bit to the left. It's pretty precise angle that you need to get so that you don't have to readjust later on. We'll see if Calco gets it here. Missing an egg shot on that. Whatever that spiky thing is. You would think I'd know the names of these things, but no. Oh, Calco. Hey, that's a good backup. That didn't lose much time. He missed the first cycle, so he just waited for it to go around to the bottom. Should probably learn that at some point. Empty getting a good cookie too, it looks like. Yeah, nice. I think Kalko might be going for a faster version of this boss fight than they usually do. Usually people just run straight to the right and start pushing the pot right away, but if you wait just a little bit, something about when the pot pushes you and this shy guy is not coming up to push the pot right away somehow makes the same time. I think he'll be going for the head bonk under the level as well. If you bonk the ceiling on the same frame that the explosion starts, I'm not sure if he got it there, it might have worked, then Yoshi won't jump into the keyhole for whatever reason. Let's see if he got it. Nope. Yoshi ju jumped. He probably hit it just a little bit too early. Let's see if MT goes for it. No, he was too early. He did go for it, then. I think that ends up saving about 45 frames or so, if I remember right. Going for it means that you can't do the other strat to save time, which is to scroll the screen up to make Roger die a little sooner. But the head bonk is faster if you get it. 
on a 3-1, I think Kalko is going to be doing a red coinless strat here. There's one coin that's pretty difficult to avoid, but if you do a very small jump, you can just barely get under it. Oh, he grabbed it. Probably just jumped a little bit too high. Gonna be doing our second intentional damage boost. Oh, empty is... He did go for the red coin list, but he did a slightly slower setup. That's easier. Still saves time, though. Um, Kalko just damage boosting through that line of monkeys there. If you don't do that, you have to duck under them, which is a tiny bit slower. I missed it. What happened to MP? He almost fell. Yeah, those pits at the end can be kind of spooky. If you get slowed down at all, all the the um, monkeys throwing stuff at you can hit you. It can get kind of spooky to avoid it all. 3-2, there's a ton of stuff going on in this very short level. There's a lot of camera manipulation to make these platforms load in sooner. Looks like Calco nailed it all. He does just plow right through those red coins. I think that is slightly slower than fluttering over them. MT just barely missing the platform. Shouldn't lose too much time, though. Just a couple quick jumps to get back up. MT throwing a an egg at that tap tap and falling down there instead. That's, I believe, a little bit faster since you avoid all the red coins. We are going to be seeing the monkey tube coming up from Calco pretty soon. Um, this trick works by sliding off of a, a slope piece of sand while ducking and then bouncing on an bouncing on a monkey to keep your your duck state. It's kind of like doing a duck jump, but you can't actually do a duck jump in this game, so this is the only way you can do it. And he nails it first try. That skips taking the helicopter to get through that that one tile gap there. pretty tricky to get first try because you have to get the monkey spit in the right spot so often it takes a couple tries just to get the monkey in the right place and then it's also pretty precise when you press left to actually get in that gap taking a few attempts for MT but he made it Calco doing some screen manip here to get under this spike ball just barely makes it if you don't do that then it's fastest to just plow through that spike ball, but I think it loses about a second. Go aiming an egg down these stairs, which I'm told saves time somehow. I'm not quite sure how that works. And then bouncing on this frog to skip climbing up these stairs. Or skip at least one of the jumps on the stairs. MT just taking the damage to the spike. He must have missed the minute, or else he didn't go for it. I'm not sure. It's 
So in 3-4, there is a save ring near the end of the level that you can't avoid. But if you come into it with 30 stars, then it won't take nearly as long to go through it, since it doesn't have to count up stars. So he's going to try to get as many stars as he can here. By shooting some, or bouncing some shots off the walls and ceiling to get red eggs and then shoot those at enemies. I believe you save 8 frames for each star that you don't have to count up. But then you also lose 10 frames on the score screen from having 30 stars instead of 20. So you can save a little bit over a second if you have 30 stars. Empty getting hit. Gonna hurt the star count a little bit. Oh, Calco missing one of the shots on the crab, which is gonna hurt quite a bit, because that means he doesn't have an egg for the star cloud coming up here. And notice the runners are falling into the water. Well, empty is fluttering part of the way. So we used to just flutter across that whole gap, but Saku apparently discovered it's a little bit faster to fall into the water at very specific times. And then, like, swim a little bit before you start jumping again. Um, it's kind of weird, I'm not quite sure why it works, but... Somehow it ends up being faster. MT coming out of here with 21 stars, which is going to save 8 frames on the mid ring, but lose 10 on the score screen, so he's actually losing a little time from it. I think Calco had 19 going in, so he's going to lose even more time, but it's not really that much. I think Calco got 5 shot there. I wasn't actually counting, but usually if you don't get the... If you don't get it in 5, he'll just shoot an egg straight up, so I'm assuming that was 5 shot. So the amount of damage that Froggy takes each time you shoot the uvula depends on the exact angle that you hit the uvula at. And yeah, if you do your shots perfectly, you can kill Froggy in 5, but it's pretty difficult. I think Kalka's going to be going for a 1 egg route. And three five, yeah. This is very difficult. I don't really think it's worth going for in runs. He kind of got it. I don't know if that saved time or not. Looks like MT got five shot too. Nice job. Was not expecting both of them to nail that. It's a pretty difficult one, even for top runners. Falco is probably going to be doing an off-screen Shy Guy bounce here. Nice. That's not very difficult, actually, but it looks super cool. That bottom route is just to avoid the red coins. He spit a monkey there to try to clear out that Shy Guy, but it didn't quite work. Clearing out that Shy Guy only saves like a few frames, because you just have to do a tiny left-right to avoid it. On to 3-6. I'm assuming Kalka is going to be doing bottom route. I think his old PB was actually with top route, which is a couple seconds slower. But I think he's updated it since then. Got the sick key tongue here. Saves a tiny bit of time. And yeah, he's going for bottom route. So this is actually more the intended route, although you're supposed to push a rock to get through there, which is really slow. But it is possible to go up top and just flutter over some walls. No Baxter from Calco, sadly. So 
see if MT goes for it. Got a bunch of RNG fish in 3-7 in this first room. That can be kind of difficult to navigate. You want to bounce on as many of them as you can so that you can cut out flutters. And he's also going to be spitting out a monkey to get another bounce. Very nice. You got the, the good spawns and the good bounces. MT not going for the Baxter either, I'm disappointed. Swag game is pretty underwhelming so far. Too worried about speed, I guess. Haven't gotten the last fish in weeks. Yeah, I don't know what determines whether it spawns. Cause I think people used to think it was like a sprite overload thing, but it doesn't seem to be. Seems like sometimes it spawns and sometimes it doesn't, whether you have zero or six eggs. Empty not getting that last fish spawn, but that's okay. It's just a little flutter to get across. See if he goes for the monkey bounce here. I think he might do it. Oh, he just missed. I actually don't lose much time going for that over fluttering. I think optimally, maybe it even saves time. Kind of difficult to do fast, though. Bringing in a ton of eggs to 3-8 to clear out this ghost at the start. Otherwise, you have to wait for him to spit out eggs, and that takes a super long time. The FMT does the door despawn. Oh, yeah. There, we got some swag. <laughs> nice backup from Calco. He hit that egg the wrong way, but still managed to back on it and grab it. Coming in with four eggs, which is what people usually do in world record attempts. It's a little spooky, because if you end up... Basically, if you manage your eggs perfectly, you'll come into the boss room with two eggs. So if you miss your first shot, you do have one chance to do the boss skip again. But if you miss your second shot, then you do have to actually fight this boss, which I don't think anyone knows how to do. Ooh, Calco missing the first shot. If you go too far right there, then you trigger the fight. That was really close. That is a Shiggy intended Easter egg to skip that boss. If you shoot an egg at him before you trigger the fight, then Kamek will just come in and say, oh my, and then it's over. Saves quite a bit of time. Mm -hmm. MT's struggling with this piranha skip. This is... I think the hardest piranha skip in the game. So when you shoot that piranha, its hitbox disappears for a little bit, so you have time to go through it. But since you're fluttering there, you go a lot slower, and so there's not much of a window at all to get through, so it's really easy to get hit. Empty getting that piranha. The, the big piranha skip. The boss skip. I didn't see if that was his first egg or his second. We are on to the next fuzzy room. Kalko skipping that mid ring. Must be confident in his platforming skills here. If you get fuzzied, which he just did, there is a chance you can clip through the floor if you run on an upslope the wrong way. And you can easily die, so that's pretty spooky. Kalko also doing a Baby Mario skip. 
That saves about a half a second, I think. Involves some kind of precise Shy Guy fit and a perfect flutter. See how MT fares with the fuzzies. I think MT was trying to skip that mid ring, but that might be fortunate that he got it. This is a place where you can easily die. Well, he made it through pretty cleanly. Well, I guess he didn't need the mid ring. Alco going through the cave of the Lakitus, I believe it's called. Not too much to say about this level, just a lot of movement. There's a very easy Baxter at the end, so hoping he'll go for it. Though he has no eggs right now, so he might not. Doing three tongues to slow down just enough to avoid scraping that wall. A nice little setup. This is so sad. No Baxters from either of our runners. I would have thought better. Well, maybe we'll at least get a chicken Baxter. Calco going for the shell jump, I assume. Shell jump saves quite a bit of time. I think around four seconds. It is pretty tricky, though. Did have to do one extra flutter to get up, but that's pretty common. Please, can you commentate this with more enthusiasm? I don't know, man. I can try. Reese doesn't start until 5-4. Maybe I'll get excited at 5-4. We'll see. Ooh, empty going for the Baxter. At least he tried it. Just barely missed, I think. Maybe he tongued a little bit too late. In a successful Baxter attempt, you would get the egg to go all the way to the next Yoshi, so the next Yoshi picks it up. Just some swag to look cool. Unless you do it with a chicken. But we'll talk about that later. MT missing the shell jump. Pretty good recovery with the balloons, though. They were fairly nice to him. Calco going into perhaps the hardest level in the game to optimize. There's just a ton of stuff going on in this level. There's four different rooms you have to go in to get keys. And then, once you have your four keys, you can make it to the boss. Fright Room starts with a block break section. So you have to bounce a ton of eggs to try to break these blocks as fast as possible. Looks like he made it through pretty well. Weezing his way through all those platforms without landing on any of them. That's pretty tricky to do. And you notice he just walked straight through that bandit. He actually did a very quick tongue to stun the bandit so he could walk through without getting grabbed. That's a very clean room from Kalko. This room we're going to be grabbing a Sniffit to bounce on and skip riding up a another cookie. Calco nails that as well.
And Nail's the perfect flutter to get up to that boss or not the boss door. To get up to that boss that door a little quicker. I can't talk. This room can be pretty laggy with clearing out the foam. A little bit of lag there. Empty making his way through top right room. Looks like it's going pretty well so far. I don't think Kalko will be going for bucket skip. But you never know. Yeah, no. It is possible to flutter under that little wall there and not ride the bucket, but it's very risky because it's really easy to fall into the lava. And it only saves about two and a half seconds, maybe? It's a pretty silly strat. I think Saku actually got a world record with it. He was on not a great pace at that point, and then kind of decided to throw away the run with Bucket Skip and nailed it and ended up saving it. And I think it was only record by like a second or two, so he actually needed Bucket Skip to get the record. Let's see if MT goes for it. Probably not. No. So the optimal milled fight here, we want to see a triple ground pound, where Kalko will throw an egg at a couple of the milds. Well, at one of the milds to hit it into the other two and then ground pound all three of them at once. It is pretty tricky to do, but I think Kalko's pretty good at it. Nice job. Very clean fight. That egg shot to clear out all the milds at the end always looks really cool. Not too difficult, but it is kind of tricky. We are on to the Chomp Rock Zone, where we will not be touching any Chomp Rocks whatsoever. So, Shiggy was nice and made most of these walls so you can flutter right over them. I don't know how much of it was intentional or not, but it's very fortunate for us speedrunners. Kalko's gonna be grabbing a melon bug, and he'll be using it to do a cute little boost coming up here. One of my favorite little time saves. Fits it out right here, and it just hits Yoshi in the back. And just gives him a tiny little speed boost. I don't even know how much that saves. It mostly just looks cool. See if MT goes for the triple. I'm not sure if he does it or not. Looks like he's going for it. Oh, didn't quite get it. Taking a little damage there. Just gonna clear out everything and not even worry about getting baby Mario back. He'll come back eventually. Once you kill the boss, baby Mario just kind of comes flying back to Yoshi. Which really makes you think, like, if baby Mario was capable of that the whole time, why doesn't he do it more often? Maybe he doesn't really want to be with Yoshi most of the time. Kalko going for that shell jump. That doesn't save much, but it saves a little bit, and it looks super cool. Yeah, it loses less frames to ignore baby Mario, since you don't have to take the time to grab him, plus you save time on the score screen from having a few less stars. I think the time loss of like, the game freezing when you grab Baby Mario still applies. Even if you get him back after the fight's done, but I'm not 100% sure.
It wouldn't for an aisle, though. Oh, that's true, because the explosion happens before you grab Baby Mario back. That's interesting. It might cause a little bit of lag in some levels, but probably wouldn't be huge. So I imagine Kalka's going to be going for Chicken Baxter. So there's some little things that you can use as eggs in this level, and you're not supposed to be able to take them out of the level. But if you do a frame-perfect trick, you can. Chicken, my beloved. That's one I haven't heard before. Yeah, Kalka's grabbing two chickens. Doing a setup that I'm not used to. I'm not sure how this is going to work. He's got the two chickens at the very front. I don't know if this is gonna work. I guess we'll find out. MT getting hit by that crab. Works here. No. Yeah, I don't think that setup's right, because... The... Chicken that he shot is in slot two, and then the egg that he shot would be in it was probably slot six, but you want it to be in a lower slot than the chicken. Usually, you want to come in with like two eggs in front of the chicken, so you can use one for the gate hack, and then use the other one to shoot away just before. The goal ring. That Kalko... I forgot to talk about it, he did some cool antics to get under all those bike balls faster. When you um, run into the Koopa shell, it actually gives you a little bit of invincibility, which gives you just enough time to get under it. Yeah, I guess if you throw away the egg in slot 1, there's always a chance that the goal ring will just load into that slot anyway. So it could work. I don't know if it's reliable, though. Let's see if MT gets it here. I didn't pay attention to his right ID setup. Ooh, nice! Is that the first Chicken Baxter of the tournament? I don't think I've seen anybody get it yet. That is a frame-perfect trick. You have to cancel your egg shot on the same frame that you enter the goal ring. That's the second one. Still pretty nice, though. That'll save, I believe, around eight and a half seconds on the... on the Koopa fight. Hookbill's his name. Okay, Yama, you got it. Oh, and Seuss lost a chicken in 4 8. That's tragic. So, Kalko is showing how the fight's supposed to be done. You have to throw four eggs at Hookbill to get him to turn all the way over. But hopefully, if MT keeps the chicken, we'll see how you can save time with the chicken by just throwing the chicken out at once and he'll go. It'll flip all the way over in one egg shot. Oh, Kalko! Oh, did he get the... He still got the rocket jump. Oh, that's the super swag one. I love that one. Where Yoshi keeps teleporting back to Hookbill and blasting off multiple times. I'm not sure why that happens or how you get it, but it's always super cool when it happens. And Kalko is on a really good pace right now. Sub 59 World 4 is better than I've ever gotten. I think. Better than 
probably most top runners have, except Saku and Far probably. Okay, MT is going to be showing off how you fight this guy with the chicken. Looks so cool. Just throw one egg and he just flips over. See if MT gets the moon blast off. Nice. Kako doing all the fast rats in the 5 1 cave room. That egg shot to hit that one icicle is really precise. He nailed it. Let's see if Kalko goes for the swag ball. I don't think he will, but you never know. I think someone said it loses like four seconds to push that ball. This is the intended way to do it, but Kalko's just bouncing off the bumpity. Interesting strat. Most people will just do a perfect flutter and then spit the bumpity as a backup in case you missed the perfect flutter. I think bouncing off the bumpity is a little bit slower, but faster than missing the perfect flutter, obviously. Kalko is spawning a bunch of stars to despawn this mid-ring. Saves just a little bit of time of not having to jump out of the cloud, because you lose all your speed when you jump out. Kalko has a full six eggs going into 5-3. I'm not sure if that's intentional or if he's just being lazy with eggs, but I guess if you have more eggs going into 5-4, you can get more stars, so it might be worth it. Falco's going to be going above the screen here. Cute little trick. Actually pretty difficult. Because you can't see where you're going, and you kind of have to slow down a little bit to get up top. MT is doing our traditional strat, it looks like. Took a little damage. Oh, maybe not. Where did that bumpity come from? I have no idea what happened there. I thought the bumpity was going to be way over to the right. Maybe he ran back to get baby Mario? I'm not sure. MT is going to be despawning the mid ring. Well, maybe not. He just. Yeah, that works too. He got knocked out of that cloud on accident. Kalko's going through the scariest part of the game right here. These spikes have claimed a lot of Yoshis over the years. He makes it through there effortlessly, though. Without even ducking for safety. We are on to the skis. Talco intentionally taking damage to those rocks. I'm not 
sure if that's faster. It might be faster to do some precise jumps over them. I have to do some retiming on this stuff. I can't remember what's fast and what's not. This is kind of an auto-scroller section, but there are some jumps you can do to save a little bit of time. Falco taking some more damage. MT is about to get to the scary room in 5-3, so we'll see how he fares. <laughs> that was a clutch duck there. Coming into 5-4, he's going to be using those eggs to make stars because there is a mid-ring at the end that you can't avoid. There's also another mid-ring that he might choose to take even though you can't avoid it because there's a very hard trick coming up that you can very easily die to. I imagine many of you are familiar with the infamous 5-4 skip. We're going to be fluttering under a pretty long room. And if you drop a flutter, you're dead. Imagine he'll be taking this mid-ring. Yeah. Already had 29 stars, I think, so it didn't take much time. Get your prayers out in chat for Calco. Each one of these flutters requires a... You have to let go of B for exactly one frame to not lose height. If you let go for two frames, it's okay, but you will be losing some height. Looks like Kalko got through the hardest part, though. So as long as he can land on these bats when they're not visible, should be okay. See just a tiny bit of the wings on that second one. And he is safe. Nice job. That was a very difficult trick. Big run killer right there. Now for the hard part of Pi 4. This boss fight involves going off screen to like, I guess despawn Sluggy's hitbox and then respawn it. Like you'll shoot an egg and then respawn him while the egg's inside so you can get right to the, the heart in one shot. But yeah, get your prayers out for MT. He's going to be going for this gip as well. MT also grabbing the mid ring. I think Calco nailed the fight, but I really wasn't watching. It looked pretty fast, though. Yeah, Skip was first try. For Calco. Looking good from MT so far. Little bit low, but he should be fine. 
Oh, that's not good. I think he can still save this. He lost one of his bats. Kind of a tricky bounce off this bat to get over this platform. Oh, that's not good. It's a good attempt, though. Algo's going for a helicopter skip over here. Save a second. MT going for this skip again. Should still be able to save time even with second try. Winter tournament with 86 degrees. Is that what it is in Chile? Yeah, I think it saves about um, a second and a half for like an IL. Oh, that's not good. He bonked the ceiling and lost his extended flutter. Oh, that's not good. This trick can be a real pain because after a couple attempts your thumb starts getting sore and then it becomes harder to flutter. Hopefully MT can make it here though. It's really not a bad idea to try it once and then just ride the platform. If you just keep trying this and failing it over and over, you can lose a ton of time. Nice job, though. Third try really isn't bad at all, considering how difficult that trick is to pull off in a run. Or to pull off at all, really. Falco's just showing off in the auto scroller. I'll empty fight Sluggy. He was looking good, but I think he missed one shot and then got messed up. Once you miss one shot, it's kind of hard to get back on track because the, the lineup's for where you need to shoot, keep changing as Sluggy keeps moving farther left. Sometimes if I get, if I start messing up, then I'll just grab a bunch of eggs and do it casually. MT goes for helicopter skip here. Helco not 100%ing the level. Very sad. Pretty sure he knows how, considering he has the hundo record. It's a bit slower, though. Well, actually, the 100% IL and the any% percent IL are the same run by MT, so the time loss is just going to be on the score screen. It just happens that even in the non-auto-scroller part of this level, you can just throw eggs at all the stuff you need to get without losing time. 
Calco skip in the mid ring. A little bit risky, because if you die here, you have to play the whole auto scroller again, but this last section isn't too difficult. There are a few death spikes. They never hurt anybody. Calco making it through pretty easily. Yeah, the only things that are like out of the way you can just throw eggs at so it doesn't even lose time. It might actually be slightly faster in level to not avoid some of those flowers. I'm not sure. You might have to go out of your way to do it any percent. Calco making his way through 5-7. A lot of quick platforming here. Doing some platform boosts. See if he does this platform boost at the end. It's kind of spooky. Nice. Then we're going to be doing another piranha skip here. Nice. That one saves a lot of time because otherwise you have to ride that that slow platform down and for like a few seconds and then throw three eggs at the piranha kind of spooky though because if you get hit you're probably dead depending on how you get hit Calco entering 5-8 now. It's gonna be climbing up all the way to the moon in this level. It apparently is not as far away from Yoshi's Island as it is from Earth. So you can get there in just a matter of a couple minutes. Dang, he's skipping both of those bullet bills. I think that is faster than the normal strat that people do. Not sure I've ever seen anybody do that in a run. Using this cookie to climb up a little higher. And this last climbing section is probably the hardest part. There's some pretty tight jumps to avoid the enemies here, all still going fast. Calco nails it though. Very clean. MT showing off with the chicken. Ooh. It's a little bit spooky there. Thought MT was gonna fall in that pit for a second. So we want this penguin here to go to the left. If he goes right, it's not too big of a deal as long as he doesn't stop too early. If he goes right and then stops early, you lose a ton of time. He is going right, that's not good. Well, at least he didn't stop. He's supposed to be a raven, but... I like to joke that he's a penguin, because he really looks more like a penguin than a raven. Stands up tall and waddles on two feet.
Can the raven duck? I don't know about that. You could duck while fighting the raven. Oh! MT just scraping that platform. His jump might have gotten eaten there. Those falling platforms, there's one frame just a bit after when you land on them when you actually aren't standing on the platform. And so, yeah, if you press jump on that frame, you just won't get a jump. Okay, he made it. Nice save. Oh, MT going for that perfect jump off of the that fast red platform. If you jump on the first frame, even though it looks like it moves down immediately, if you jump if you jump the first frame, I think it's like moving up for one frame, so you get like a super high boost into the air. Usually only see that in aisles. Curious if MT will go for the aisle strat at the end here. You can spit out a bumpity. No, he's not going for it. If you spit out a bumpity at just the right spot, you can go up above the level and cut out a couple flutters. Kalko making his way into the chomp room. This can be kind of scary if usually the chomps will behave, but every once in a while they'll they'll fall right in front of you, and you can easily fall into a pit. Looks like they're pretty nice for MT though. Or not MT, Calco. I'm getting my runners mixed up. See if Calco goes to the right or the left of this. He goes to the left. I imagine he goes to the right in PB attempts. Is he really on PB base? That would be insane. Oh, fake PB. Yeah, I think he has like a low 142 splits that he's been running against. But even if he beat that, that would be insane for a race. One forty one thirty one. Oh my gosh. I mean, his gameplay has been very clean so far. I guess it makes sense that he's on good pace. Yeah, we haven't seen a 142 yet this tournament, so skipping down to a 141 would be really crazy. Calco's actually actual PB, I think, is 141.38, or maybe it's 39, somewhere in that area. Oh wait, it's on the screen. <laughs> yep, it's 39. Let's see if the penguin goes left for MT. Nope, not being nice. Well, at least he didn't stop. It's also random whether he decides to shoot his fireballs before moving. So empty got one fireball attack, which isn't too bad. Ideally you don't want any though. It's a penguin. I will die on this hill. I guess Shiggy didn't know his birds very well. He thought it was a raven. An edgy penguin. <laughs> oh 
about some fat penguins in Japan. I don't think they have penguins in Japan. Calco's been going for a new strat in 6-4, where if you do a backwards accel acceleration at the start of the level, or you do like a real quick left-right, then you can make a jump onto a rock that you normally can't make it onto. I think it saves a second and a half or something. Nope. Probably didn't get a good backwards excel, so I didn't go for it. I wasn't paying enough attention, though. Oh yeah, maybe he just didn't want to risk it. If you fail it, you can... it kind of messes up the whole cycle of the rocks. I'm not sure how much you'll lose if you fail it. Oh, he missed the key. That key is really hard to tongue from that position for some reason. So there is actually a second salvo refight in this level, but we're going to be skipping it by doing a couple of perfect flutters. Or at least one perfect flutter to get over this wall here. Kalko is skipping that mid ring. Curious if he'll go for lava skip. Plowing through these coins and flower. It's actually faster to flutter under them. He is going for it. I think in one of the races he tried to land on the log and slipped off and fell and had to replay the whole level. This is a little close. He made it. Nice job. By the way, that lava skip saves three seconds. Lots of flutters for not too much time. But when you're at the level Kalka's at, it's worth doing at least for PB attempts. Nice easy tap tap fight. Just four neutral shots. And he's dead. Still on PB pace. I'm curious how good his final golds are, because I think he's using new splits, so it could be he could even gold this by quite a bit. I didn't see the fade out time. Falco is not showing off the 1.0 swag. Not sure if he's on 1.0 or not. But you can grab... If you're on 1.0, you can grab those shy guys as they're coming out of the pipes and spit them, and they'll have some kind of weird trajectories. It's kind of like fly off into space. Oh, he is showing it off. Or did he? I think he did. MT just went for those bouncy ball skips. It's a pretty scary strat. If you go just underneath those bouncy balls and land on the post, you can save a little time. Clueless commentator, I'm sorry. Should have Fiona join the VC and tell me what's really going on. I 
I've actually never played this game before, so I really don't know what's happening. It's just like a horse jumping around and doing stuff. This Umar in disguise, yep. Umar with voice changer. Imagine Kalka will be going for the rock boost here. You know you have a point, Shadow. I don't think I've heard me and Umar chat in the same room either. Yeah, we better not have a Zeus moment here. I think Zeus is the only person I've ever seen die to this threat. Unfortunately, he has now popularized being terrified of this rock strat. Calco showing it's easy though. There is a auto scroller skip here coming up. Nice, first try. Just have to do a frame perfect jump off that high ledge there. And that that prevents the screen from scrolling up. I guess it doesn't realize that you she landed on the ledge. And so this camera doesn't scroll up high enough to load in the auto scroll trigger. Yeah, just a frame perfect jump, no big deal. Next level, you're going to be seeing a double frame perfect trick. Where's this attitude for magical journey? Are there frame perfect jumps in magical journey? There probably are, I can't remember. Some really dumb strats you can go for. Try not bad. Getting that rockless. <laughs> no, but there's plenty of six minute time loss. That is very true. That's the fun thing about Magical Journey. Calco just skipped pretty much the entirety of 6-6. And I didn't really say anything about it because I was distracted by chat. I don't imagine Kalko will be going for 6-7 skip if he's on PB pace. But if he did, he might actually be able to get world record. That would be super epic. Doing some kind of precise jumping here to get the camera high. And that makes this green platform load in sooner. Yeah, there's a trick in this level that's extremely difficult. No one's ever gotten in a run, but it saves somewhere between 40 and 45 seconds. World record's 140.53, I believe. Yeah, I didn't think he was going to go for it. He is smart. 
Not when you're on PB pace. When you want to go for 6-7 skip is when you're just barely not on PB pace. Because then you're not losing a PB if you miss it, you know? Our seeds. So that's... The seeding is based on... Their... The runner's PBs when the tournament started. So, like, seed number one is the person with the best PB, and that just determines how the runners are matched up against each other. So the skip skips this whole section with riding this platform. You can actually go... You use a Sniffit and fit it into the wall with a frame-perfect fit, and you can bounce on it and get over this whole section. It'll go, like, over the ceiling. It loses a lot of time if you go for it and miss it, though. It might lose, like, 20-25 seconds. Wait, Calco's PB is from this exact date five years ago. Wow. I think luck is really on his side, then. The sign. That would be nuts if he got this and got a PB in this, the race. MT's pulling a Zeus here, but he jumped out. Yeah, if you get pushed a little bit too far by that rock, you'll somehow end up clipping into the floor. But you can jump out. You have to jump out at, like, the very start of that slope. Oh wow, this is really good pace. I think if he had a super good Bowser... He might even be able to 1x this. Probably realistically, like, a mid-2x or something. If I did the math right. Y'all be math is hard. Yeah. I have a math degree and I don't know how to do this. MT going for Rockless here. This is a double frame perfect trick, so that's why it's taken a few tries. Very tricky. Double frame perfect plus another input that's kind of tight. I guess Calco letting him shoot the magic. I mean, it doesn't lose time as long as you don't get hit. But it is a little bit scary. I like to just... despawn de him by following him around. Actually, is Kamek a him or a her? I don't even know. A man, okay. I'll take your word for it. They probably need a pretty good Bowser. I'm not... If I did the math right, you should have some... Some room for error. Calco plays this well next race, I'm going to be screwed. Mm. 
He is doing the slightly faster baby Bowser strat where you bounce on him. I think it saves about a half second. <laughs> he tongues right through him. Nice TIA. It's a perfectly straight one, too. Can't imagine how that feels for Bowser. Might not be the best for his health. And here we are. The final Bowser fight. Kalko is pretty good at this fight, I believe. Gotten some very fast fights. But you just never know with this guy. Bowser can be quite a troll. Throwing off those eggs real fast. I think it's a little bit less than 20 seconds from explosion to time. Yeah, that's gonna be like a low 2x right there. Oh my gosh. Kalko the Mad Lad. That is insane. Very nice run from Kalko, 141.24. Yeah, that's going to be a hard one to beat. With that level of gameplay, I wonder if he's going to keep going and go for the world record. If you can casually pull that off in a race. Oh no, MT's getting a bonus. Honestly, don't really remember any significant mistakes from Calco. I'm not. I'm sure something happened. I'd have to look back at it. See how much time saved there is. That was a really good run, though. Yeah, I'm definitely sweating right now. When Calco got the like 147, I think, in the first race, I was like, hey, maybe I'll be able to do this. But if he plays like this next time, I've got no chance. So for those of you who haven't seen the bracket, Kalko's going to be going on to face me in the finals. And then MT will be playing Fiona in the bronze match. I imagine either sometime this week or next. No 6-7 skip attempt. I mean, if he had actually gotten 6-7 skip, he could have gotten 
probably like a low 4x. Which would be basically like a dead category forever. Maybe next time. Not dead until 139. I mean, I'm sure we'll find more strats and eventually it'll get down lower. MT coming into Baby Bowser here. Imagine he will be doing the stomps as well. doing extra tongues just to get Bowser prepared nice classic freeze frame got a moisten them up Get him ready to get clobbered. MT finishing up Bowser here. I think that was a perfect fight. Nice job. That was a pretty good run. I think it was deathless other than the 5-4 deaths. Thanks to both of the runners, and thanks to Volpe for restreaming and hosting the tournament. And another massive congrats to Calco on the PB. It was an insane run right there. Prepare myself? Yeah, I'm prepared to lose. I haven't decided if I want to pay attention to the restream or not. Might just make me nervous if I see Calco nailing everything.
when is the final? I'm not sure. It's me and Kalka will have to schedule it. I imagine sometime either this week or next. Whenever we can find time to do it. Yeah, Calco got a PB in the race. Was a pretty insane run right there. Calco's at the level where you don't really expect to see race PBs. Takes a usually takes a huge grind to get a PB like that. Yeah, I don't know how Saku does it. I really did not see many mistakes in Kalko's run at all, so I don't know where Saku's saving 30 seconds, but... I guess they're hiding in there somewhere. Okay, well, I guess that wraps it up for today. So thanks for watching, everybody. And tune in whenever the next races are, whenever they're scheduled. Have a good night or whatever time of day it is where you live.